Anita Ekberg, renowned for her captivating beauty and unrestrained sensuality, achieved international fame in Federico Fellini's 1960 film La Dolce Vita. Her role in the movie expertly showcased her sensuous allure and striking appearance, captivating audiences to such an extent that the Vatican itself declared the film immoral. Despite her success in La Dolce Vita, Anita continued to pursue her acting career in both Europe and Hollywood. However, as time passed, her career gradually declined. Even after her passing in 2015, the enigmatic actress who left an indelible mark in La Dolce Vita continues to intrigue audiences. Join us as we delve into the mesmerizing presence of Anita Ekberg. Anita Ekberg was born on September 29, 1931, in Sweden, as one of eight children in her family. Her journey into the world of fame began with the inspiration of her siblings, who had found success in local beauty pageants. Encouraged by their achievements, Anita decided to venture into the world of beauty pageants herself. In the year 1950, Anita participated in her very first beauty pageant, and it became evident that she was a natural talent. She effortlessly clinched victory in her debut pageant, setting the stage for what was to come. Subsequently, she went on to compete and triumph in the Miss Sweden pageant in the same year. With two major pageant wins under her belt, Anita set her sights on the prestigious Miss Universe pageant. In 1951, she found herself competing in the Miss Universe pageant, despite not being fluent in English at the time. Despite the language barrier, Anita's charisma and charm left a lasting impression on the judges, making her a standout contestant. While Anita Ekberg may not have emerged as the ultimate winner of the Miss Universe pageant, her remarkable presence did not go unnoticed. She was among the contestants selected for an opportunity that would alter the course of her life, signing a contract with Universal Studios. Subsequently, this young woman signed with the studio, embarking on a professional journey that would span several years. Anita Ekberg, as recounted by the late actress herself, invested a substantial amount of effort in honing her craft at Universal Studios, diligently preparing for film roles that, unfortunately, never materialized. After months of intensive training under the aegis of the production company, Anita's affiliation with Universal Studios took an unexpected turn when they decided to sever ties without finding a suitable project for her talents. Nevertheless, this period in the budding star's career was not in vain. Her tenure at Universal Studios furnished her with invaluable industry experience, leaving her better equipped than ever to pursue her ultimate goal of achieving success in the entertainment world. During her tenure with Universal Studios, Anita Ekberg divulged that a significant portion of her time was dedicated to mastering the art of horseback riding. While she did make a handful of minor appearances on screen during this period, none of them managed to capture the attention of audiences quite like her later work would. In the wake of her brief stint with Universal Studios, Anita Ekberg delved into the world of modeling and became a prominent figure in Hollywood social circles. During this time, she was frequently spotted in the company of several renowned personalities, including the likes of Yul Brynner and Frank Sinatra, with whom she would later collaborate professionally. After what seemed like a period of stagnation in her entertainment career, Anita Ekberg's fortunes took a dramatic turn, thanks to the intervention of beloved comedian Bob Hope. Her much-awaited breakthrough came in the form of a remarkable opportunity, a series of USO, United Service Organizations, shows. Originally slated to feature Marilyn Monroe, the shows suddenly found themselves in need of a replacement. In a stroke of good fortune for Anita, Bob Hope handpicked her for the role. Finally, Anita Ekberg was given the chance to shine in her element, captivating audiences with her performances during these USO shows. The attention garnered from these appearances proved to be a turning point in the struggling actress's career. It ultimately led to her being signed by none other than John Wayne's production company, known as Batjack Productions. 
Unlike Universal Studios, Batjack Productions proved to be more adept at harnessing Anita Ekberg's appeal and connecting with audiences. Under Batjack's banner, she was cast in notable films such as Bloody Alley and War and Peace. It was her involvement in the latter production that ultimately led her to Rome and set the stage for the most iconic role of her career. Throughout the 1950s, Anita Ekberg continued to make appearances in various European films while also collaborating with John Wayne on American projects. Her journey took a significant turn when she traveled to Italy to work on War and Peace. It was during this time, in the enchanting Italian setting, that she began to entertain the idea of making Italy her new home. Anita Ekberg's decision to embrace Italy and make it her home raised intriguing questions about why a Hollywood icon would leave the glitz and glamour of the stars and stripes for a life painted in the vibrant colors of the Italian tricolor. Her connection with Italy went far beyond a mere change of scenery. It was a profound and soulful bond that resonated deeply within her. Once Anita arrived in Italy, she effortlessly melded into the warm embrace of its culture, much like a person comfortably slipping into a beloved pair of designer shoes. The Mediterranean sun and the vivacity of Italian living became an integral part of her life, and she became an active participant in the tapestry of Italian society. Itali provided Anita Ekberg with a canvas upon which she painted a portrait of her life that was as intricate and multifaceted as the country itself. Her experiences in Italy, filled with personal and social narratives, were a stark departure from the typical roles she had been handed in Hollywood. It was here, amidst the cobblestone streets and picturesque landscapes, that Anita's true essence unfolded. Anita Ekberg did, indeed, embark on a new chapter by getting married while in Italy. However, the marriage proved to be ill-fated, marked by challenges and difficulties. Nevertheless, her time spent in Italy would prove to be serendipitous, as it paved the way for her to secure the iconic role in the 1960 film La Dolce Vita. This remarkable turn of events would etch her name in cinematic history and forever link her to the allure of Italian cinema. Anita Ekberg's journey to fame in Hollywood had its early challenges, but she found herself ascending to stardom in Italy shortly after arriving in the country. By her mid-twenties, Anita had become one of the most popular starlets in the region, captivating audiences with her undeniable charm and allure. Her fame was further heightened when she entered into a marriage with Anthony Steele, a British actor. This union thrust them into the spotlight of tabloid scrutiny, but beneath the glamorous facade, their relationship was far from ideal. Photographers often portrayed Anita Ekberg and Anthony Steele as a contented couple, but the reality was marred by numerous issues that afflicted their marriage. The primary problem revolved around Anthony's battle with alcoholism, which exacerbated his feelings of jealousy towards his wife and strained their relationship. Anita Ekberg's extraordinary beauty made her a constant subject of the male gaze whenever she stepped out in public. Her allure was undeniable, and she effortlessly commanded attention wherever she went. However, this attention sometimes led to discord in her marriage to Anthony Steele. Anthony's jealousy became increasingly apparent as he found himself frequently embroiled in disputes with men who couldn't resist Anita's charms. Over time, Anita grew weary of his possessive and confrontational attitude. In a somewhat perplexing turn of events, Anita Ekberg recounted her final encounter with Anthony Steele, during which she loaned him a substantial sum of $100,000. Unfortunately, this loan was never repaid. Their marriage, which began in 1956, was relatively short-lived and came to an end in 1959. Despite the brevity of their union, it left an indelible mark on both of their lives and remained a topic of interest for fans and tabloids alike. 
Following her divorce from Anthony Steele, Anita Ekberg embarked on a pivotal phase of her career that would solidify her status as an iconic actress. In 1960, she made her unforgettable appearance in the Italian film La Dolce Vita. Anita's journey to this remarkable role began when she met the renowned director Federico Fellini in Rome. Their encounter left an indelible impression on Fellini, and he was so captivated by the Swedish starlet that he made the spontaneous decision to cast her in his upcoming feature of film, in La Dolce Vita. Anita Ekberg portrayed the character Sylvia Rank, a role that would define her career. Her performance in the film was nothing short of spectacular, earning her accolades and recognition worldwide. One particular scene in the movie became legendary and contributed significantly to the film's success. It featured Anita at the iconic Trevi Fountain, where she revealed her astonishing cleavage. This scene took audiences by storm and even stirred controversy when the Vatican declared the film immoral due to its audacious content. Anita Ekberg's response to the Vatican's criticisms of her cleavage in La Dolce Vita was nothing short of remarkable. Rather than being deterred or disheartened by the controversy, she chose to embrace her bold portrayal. In the face of the Vatican's disapproval, Anita publicly expressed her pride in her own body and her satisfaction with the opportunity to showcase it in the film. Her confident and unapologetic stance garnered admiration from many who saw her as a symbol of empowerment. Remarkably, audiences around the world seemed to resonate with Anita's perspective rather than the Vatican's condemnation. La Dolce Vita became a major success, further solidifying Anita Ekberg's status as an international icon. Her fearless attitude and unwavering self-assuredness added an extra layer of intrigue to her already captivating persona. Shooting this memorable scene wasn't without its challenges. Anita endured extreme cold in the fountain, to the point where she nearly faced hypothermia. However, her dedication and professionalism prevailed, and she delivered a performance that left a lasting impact on cinema history. Despite the physical discomfort and challenges she faced during the filming of this scene, Anita Ekberg's ability to captivate audiences with her charisma and beauty was undeniable. It was a pivotal moment in her career, and La Dolce Vita remains an enduring testament to her talent and enduring appeal. Anita Ekberg's cinematic legacy is a tale of immortalized moments— none more iconic than her playful frolic in the Trevi Fountain in Federico Fellini's masterpiece, La Dolce Vita. That particular scene transcended the confines of celluloid. It was a cultural thunderclap that reverberated through the collective consciousness of a captivated global audience. Ekberg solidified herself as an emblem of hedonistic glamour, embodying a voluptuous Venus, seemingly emerging, laughing and resplendent, from the waters of the Roman fountain. She wasn't just an actress, she became the living embodiment of the sweet life, pulsating at the heart of the cultural impact generated by La Dolce Vita. While Anita Ekberg's life will forever be associated with that unforgettable Fellini-esque night, her body of work extends far beyond that single moment. She wasn't merely a splash in the fountain of fame. She carved indelible grooves into the silver screen through her versatile and enduring contributions to the film industry. Unfortunately, after the resounding success of La Dolce Vita, Anita Ekberg's career seemed to reach its zenith, and her trajectory took a downward turn. In the wake of her iconic Trevi Fountain scene in La Dolce Vita, Anita Ekberg embarked on a quest for a career renaissance, seeking to revive her once unshakable standing in the limelight. European cinema beckoned her, and she responded with a fervor to redefine herself within a rapidly changing industry landscape. Her journey through this phase of her career was marked by a diverse array of projects, ranging from the small screen to the unforgiving gaze of the theater stage. These ventures were not always met with the adulation she had previously enjoyed. 
but they were infused with Anita's unyielding spirit and a fervent desire to experiment and challenge herself. Throughout the 1960s, Anita continued to be a consistent presence in the entertainment industry. She graced the screens in both numerous European productions and some notable American films. In Europe, her filmography during this period included works like The Mongols and Behind Closed Doors, further solidifying her reputation as a talented actress with a global appeal. On the other side of the Atlantic, Anita Ekberg found herself sharing the screen with some iconic members of the Rat Pack. In 1963, she starred alongside Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin in the feature film Four for Texas. Later, in 1966, she appeared alongside Jerry Lewis in the comedy Way, Way Out. However, despite her enduring talent and previous successes, the 1970s posed challenges for the Swedish actress. As the 1970s rolled in, Anita Ekberg faced some significant challenges in her career. To make ends meet, she found herself having to accept roles in B-movies, a stark departure from her earlier iconic performances. During this period, some of her most notable work came in the form of European schlock films with titles like Gold of the Amazon Women and Killer Nun. Not only was her career facing turbulence, but her personal life also underwent significant changes. Anita had married her second husband, Rick Van Nutter, in 1963. However, as the mid-1970s approached, their marriage began to unravel, adding further strain to her life. As the, calendar pages turned, as the calendar pages turned into the 1980s, Anita Ekberg gradually reduced her workload, signaling a move towards semi-retirement in Rome, the city she had come to embrace as her own. Throughout the 1990s, there was a relative silence surrounding the actress. However, the 2000s brought her back into the public eye, not for her cinematic endeavors, but due to a series of illnesses that led to hospitalizations. These health challenges served as a stark reminder of the actress's enduring presence in the collective memory. In a particularly unfortunate turn of events, Anita Ekberg even fell victim to robbery during one of her extended hospital stays, underscoring the difficulties she faced during this period of her life. As the years progressed and the 2000s drew to a close, Anita Ekberg's financial situation became increasingly dire. She found herself in a state of financial instability, a far cry from the days when she had stood as a luminous star on the Hollywood and European cinematic stages. As Anita approached her 80s, the weight of time began to take its toll, and her health became increasingly fragile. Her once vibrant and iconic presence was now marked by the passage of time and the challenges that came with it. In January of 2015, after enduring over a decade of health struggles that had seen her in and out of hospitals, Anita Ekberg sadly breathed her last breath. Her passing marked the end of an era, leaving behind a legacy of beauty, talent, and charisma that had left an indelible mark on the world of film. Anita, who had spent most of her adult life in Italy, took her final journey back to her homeland, Sweden, upon her passing. She was cremated and laid to rest in the country of her birth, a final chapter in the remarkable life of a Swedish beauty who had enchanted the world. Anita Ekberg's legacy lives on, not just in the annals of cinema, but also in the hearts of those who admired her. In the present day, Anita Ekberg remains most renowned for her iconic role in La Dolce Vita. While the controversy surrounding the actress's captivating cleavage has subsided over time, there's still an undeniable allure in revisiting photographs of the actress during her prime. Her image continues to captivate audiences, even if in a less scandalous manner than it did back. Anita Ekberg had already established herself in the entertainment industry long before her iconic performance in La Dolce Vita. However, it is regrettable that this role marked the zenith of her career success, with subsequent years revealing a decline in her prominence within the industry. However, beneath the glitz and glamour, there existed a side of Anita Ekberg that eluded the paparazzi cameras and the flashbulbs, a compassionate and philanthropic soul, 
Her involvement in various charitable causes added a layer of depth to her persona, hidden like a precious secret shared in the shadows of a dimly lit theater. It's a striking paradox. Anita Ekberg, the sultry femme fatale, immersing herself in advocacy work with the same fervor she displayed while wading through Italian fountains. Her philanthropic endeavors, intricately woven into her celebrity status, reveal an actress who leveraged her fame not just to incite desire, but also to kindle the fires of goodwill. While her charitable acts may not have garnered as much attention as her on-screen exploits, they form a tapestry imbued with compassion and altruism, challenging the traditional lens through which we perceive her. In the serene galleries and museums, a quiet endeavor is underway, the preservation of Anita Ekberg's enigmatic legacy. Curators have delicately embraced the task of encapsulating the whirlwind essence of this legendary figure within their tranquil exhibits. These curated collections serve as a harmonious ode to her life, safeguarding her memory against the gradual erosion of time's forgetfulness. But what significance do these exhibitions hold for those who cherish cinema from the comfort of their armchairs and the generations raised on the digital age's offerings? Each retrospective, every frame, and each costume serves as a doorway to a bygone era of filmmaking, resonating with the echoes of that larger-than-life persona we came to know as Anita Ekberg. Her presence within these cultural archives beckons us to reflect upon and celebrate a woman who was as intricate as she was enchanting. In conclusion, dear enthusiasts, we find ourselves at the pinnacle of this vibrant retelling of Anita Ekberg's intricately woven life narrative. Her story gracefully pirouettes between the glamour of Hollywood's golden age and the rustic charm of her European haven. Anita's enduring image, a blend of mythical allure and down-to-earth candor, remains as steadfast as the timeless beauty of Catherine Zeta-Jones or the memorable performances of Ben Feldman. The mystique surrounding Eckberg persists, akin to the lingering scent of an exquisite Ariana Grande perfume, untouched by the passage of time. As we revisit the multifaceted tale of Anita, a life marked by celebrated fame and poignant trials, we acknowledge the intricate narrative, from her groundbreaking films like La Dolce Vita, to her tumultuous romances and the meaningful undertones of her philanthropic endeavors. In today's ever-shifting societal landscape, where the representation of women in cinema evolves alongside rising talents like Rumi Carter and Sir Carter, we encounter Anita Ekberg's reflection glistening in the waters of history. And within this reflection, we are reminded that her legacy transcends mere remembrance. It serves as an enduring conversation about the idols we create and the humanity we sometimes overlook. Now it's your turn to join the conversation. Were you aware that the Vatican condemned the Italian film La Dolce Vita due to its bold portrayal of Anita Ekberg's cleavage and that she was hired on the spot for the role by the renowned filmmaker Federico Fellini? Share your thought in the comment section to let us know. As always, we appreciate your support so please consider liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and ringing the notification bell to stay updated on our upcoming content. Thank you for being a part of our community. See you next time. Bye.